Hey guys, welcome back to another video. As you guys may already know, we have a website, rugbabe.com, where we sell tufting supplies and lots of other cool materials to help you guys make your very own custom handmade rugs. If you also have any questions about tufting, you can definitely shoot us an email at support at rugbabe.com where we can try to answer any questions you guys may have. But for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to tuft as well as covering all of your frequently asked questions. My name is Autumn and let's get started. So right now I'm standing in front of my smallest frame. This frame is three by three feet and I already have my cloth stretched out on it. You can actually find this cloth on our website, rugbabe.com. It is 100% premium cotton and I love it because it's so sturdy and it has these awesome white lines that act as a visual guide for when I'm, you know, stretching my cloth on my frame to make sure everything is placed correctly and when I'm tufting. And speaking of the frame, if you guys are thinking about buying your own frame, I have an awesome video you guys should definitely check out that talks all about building your own frame so you save that extra money. So before we get started, the tufting gun I am using is the ZQ2 and I've already threaded my yarn through the gun. But before we begin tufting, I wanna show you guys how to correctly place the needle of your tufting gun inside your fabric. One of my most asked questions is, why is my fabric tearing? Mind you, this fabric is really sturdy, so it will not tear easily with the correct placement of the needle in the fabric, but it could tear if you're not tufting correctly. So I'm gonna show you how to correctly place the needle of your tufting gun inside your fabric. You basically just jam it in there and make sure that there's slight pressure. Now, it could tear if you're holding the tufting gun, you know, like an inch away from the fabric and the needles not all the way inside the fabric. So again, place the needle inside your fabric, making sure that the guard meets the fabric. Your fabric is super sturdy so it can withstand a lot of pressure and that pressure is needed to make a consistent rug. That's why, you know, a good frame and a good cloth is super important. If you don't have a good frame or a good cloth, you know, your gun can skip or tear that cloth. So now I'm gonna do my first line. Keep in mind that this tufting gun only tufts going up or forward, never down or backwards. That was also an issue that one of my customers came across is you know, their fabric was tearing, so I asked them to send me a video and they were tufting going down. So that will not work if you're using this tufting gun, seeing as it only climbs going up. I'm going to place my needle in the cloth, making sure that I'm applying a good amount of pressure. There's almost a dip in the fabric. And now I'm gonna do my first line. This is a line from the front and this is a line from the back. As you can see, the cut yarn has a good height, but we are lacking that thickness. As you can see, it's fairly simple. I just did a really quick line. It's really easy to do. But now on to another frequently asked question I get asked all the time. And that is, how do I increase the thickness of my rugs? Well, there's two solutions and I'm gonna show you both right now. The first solution is to run multiple lines on top of each other. And I can do that since I'm using such a high quality cloth. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to make a whole other line next to our first one to demonstrate technique one. And now we are going to run a separate line on top of it. You can already see the difference in thickness from the second line versus from the first one. Now I'm gonna show you what one line, two lines, and three and four lines on top of each other looks like. And we do our second line. Now we're gonna do our third line. And that is three lines, and now we are gonna do four lines on top of each other. That's three, and that is four lines. This is what they look like from the back, and as you can see, the thickness progressively increases. Now on to our second solution, which is to thread our gun with multiple strings of yarn. I will be using the color orange so you guys can tell the difference. Something to keep in mind is to make sure that both of your strings are tugging at the same pressure. So let's do a quick line using this technique. 
And then let's do another one really quick. As you can see, it looks like the one that we did the two lines on top of each other, but it looks way, way neater. So since we're using such a good quality cloth, I am actually going to combine techniques one and two. I am going to do a second line over this one like we did in technique one. So now this is technically what four lines would look like over here. Now that we've covered making a normal line and increasing the thickness of our rugs, we are going to move forward with making diagonal and curve lines. We're going to follow the same steps as when we did that normal line, remembering that our gun only travels going forward. I'm going to hold my gun at the angle that I want my gun to start at. Another thing to keep in mind is that we're going to go against the grain of the cloth. So you're going to notice that when you're making lines, you know, going upwards or downwards or side to side, it's going to be much, much easier. Let me show you what I mean. Now let's do another line. You'll notice that making a diagonal line is a bit more difficult than making a straight line. This is because your cloth is weaved in a cross pattern and your tufting gun is trying to stay within those lines rather than, you know, go against the grain. This is why you'll feel resistance from your gun and it will take a little bit more pressure to keep the gun going in the direction that you want it to. One more thing that you'll find is that once you've established like a baseline, it's going to be much easier to tuft over that line. Let me show you what I mean. And this is what it looks like from the other side. So we've done our diagonal lines and now we are going to move to our curved lines. When I make a circle, I like to do it in quarters. I'll show you what I mean. So um, I start from the bottom and I hold it where it's most comfortable for me. And I'm just going to freestyle this so it might look bad. But yeah, I'm going to start from the bottom. So that is one quarter, and now I'm gonna start from this section. That is my second quarter, and I'm going to start from the bottom again. And then I'm gonna start from this piece again. And there we go. It kinda looks more like a square than a circle. So now that we have our design, I'm going to partially fill it in. And when I fill it in, I'm just going to be using straight up and down or sideways lines. I don't want to use diagonal or curved lines because it's just not necessary. So let's partially fill this in. I'm going to do like a half a half. And then I'm just going to fill it in. And I like to stop right before the other color. And I like to pull it down for every single line. That way it's not getting, you know, messed up. Because I am running those two lines, sometimes it can clog. So that's why I like to pull it down. And to fill my rugs up as much as possible, I'm going to try to make my lines right next to each other as much as possible. And what I like to do is I don't like to cut the strings. I like to just pull them. I've seen a lot of videos where they just cut them, but I think it's just so much easier to just pull them out. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. And then it looks way neater from the back. 
for when you're gluing down your rug. You don't have any, you know, cut or loose strings. And this is what it looks like from the other side. For our last tip, this is something I wish I would have figured out way, way sooner. This is for my beginners, or if you feel like your tufting gun is a little too fast, or if you're just not comfortable tufting in continuous lines. You can actually tuft in increments by squeezing and releasing the trigger over and over. So um, if I'm not comfortable tufting in a continuous line, I can actually tuft in increments by, you know, just squeezing and releasing the trigger over and over like so. Let me show you really quick. And it comes out just as good as the first one. So this is what they both look like right next to each other. This works really well if you are tufting diagonal lines or curved lines, or if you just have an intricate design that you have to tuft. So just a quick recap of this video. We learned how to place the tip of our needle inside the fabric, how to make lines, how to thicken our rugs, and how to make diagonal lines, curved lines, how to fill in our projects, and how to tuft a bit slower. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to check out our website, rugbabe.com, to get your very own tufting gun and tufting supplies, as well as email us at support at rugbabe.com if you ever have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with more videos.